Hello everybody, Luis here and let's talk C-sharp. So today, this is going to be a quick video. I just want to show you how to create random numbers in C-sharp. Um, and it, it's very simple. Uh, essentially, if you want to create random numbers, you have, to, you have to use a class called random. So it's native in C-sharp. There's no external installation or anything that I have to do. Uh, so I'm just going to create an, a random object here. I'm going to call it randomizer. And I'm going to instantiate it. Oops. There we go. So what I have here is what I'm doing. So if you don't know what I'm doing, that that's that's not a problem. Um, later on this course, we are going to get into uh, what classes are and uh, how you can create new objects of a specific class. Um, so if you don't know anything about classes, don't worry. If you do know something about classes, you know what I'm doing here. Um, so essentially, what, what's happening is that I am creating this random class and I'm creating a new instance of it. So this variable now holds a random object, uh, not a random object, object in the literal sense of the sentence, but uh, uh, an object that is capable of creating random stuff, typically random numbers, okay? So how do I do that? Well, so let me create an integer variable here. I'm gonna call this number, okay? And I'm gonna call my randomizer. And then there are many methods that I can call from it, okay? Essentially, if I wanna create a random integer, uh, and you know, thanks to IntelliSense, it quickly kicks in here, so I can take a look at all the methods that I have in this class, all the methods that I can call from this object. Um, and you, if you don't know what they do, you can just you know uh, browse through the methods, and then Visual Studio will give you this uh, description of uh, what the method does, and it also includes the method signature, which is great. So in this case, uh, I want to create a random integer. So I'm looking for the next method. Um, and if you hover your mouse over the next method, or if you just, you know, leave your cursor there, um, it, you're going to see that it returns a non-negative random integer. So essentially, it's going to give you a random int. So let's do that. And I'm going to do my console write line number. If I run this, I get a big number. So this is what? 64,784,783. Let's run this one more time. Let me see if this is really random. Yep, I got a different number now, which is great. Um, cool. So you can see that it gives me a very big number. Can potentially give me one or two or three um, but you know probability is that if, it, if, it, if it's capable of giving me any number uh, it's actually way more likely that it's a, a three digit number or more actually if even three digit that, that's that's pretty unlikely the probability is really low uh, essentially because it can give me any number any number right uh, and because it returns an integer um, you already know what the uh, the resolution for for int are in terms of uh, bits, right? So uh, you can it can turn out to be very big numbers, but luckily there's a fix to that. What if I want to generate a random number between zero and ten? I can just throw in a ten in there because the next method actually has a couple of overloads. Um, so in this case, if you hover your mouse over the next method again, uh, you're going to see that if I just pass in one integer as an argument, it's going to return a non-negative random integer that is less than the specified maximum. Okay, so um, it's going to give me something between 0 and 10, not including the 10, right? So if I run this, Gives me one, which is great. If I run this again, gives me three. Okay, so 
this is going to give me a random integer between 0 and 10, excluding 10. Uh, however, sometimes you want to be able to have some control over both the lower boundary and the upper boundary. So if that's the case, let's say you want to generate a random number between 10 and 50. Okay. Uh, and again, if you hover a mouse over the uh, next method, um, it's, it's going to give you the, the uh, description as well. And you can actually take a look at the parameter definitions. Um, and you'll see that the minimum value is kind of the lower boundary. So it's going to give you a number greater than or equal to 10 because the lower boundary is inclusive and the upper boundary is exclusive. That meaning that it's going to give you a number between 10 and 50, excluding 50. So it can go up to 49. Okay. Uh, and again, if you if you just type in these arguments uh, a little slower, what's going to happen is that it's going to give you the description of what that parameter does. And you can see that the max value in this case, it's defined as the exclusive upper bound. Okay, so in my case, it will be a 50, meaning that it can go up to 49. And the first one, the min value, you can look at the definition, it's defined as the inclusive lower bound. Okay, so let's run this again. And there you go, I get a number between 10 and 15, in this case, 13. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need if you want to create random numbers um, or random integers. Um, so what if I want to generate a random double? Let's see how we can do that. Let's take a look at the other methods in the randomizer object. I actually have a next double method as well. Look at that. And if you hover a mouse over that, you're going to see that it returns it, it doesn't have any overloads, uh, but it does return a floating point number that is greater than or equal to zero and less than one. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's run this. So it's going to give me a number between, between zero and one, excluding zero and excluding one. Um, I don't know if it actually excludes the zero from, from that equation totally, or if it's just really unlikely that you will get a zero. Um, but in any case, uh, in, you know, just for the sake of generating random numbers, you know, this is, this is how this works. You can expect a number between zero and one, which is going to be a floating point number, right? And once you have this floating point number, well, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. So let's say you want to generate a number between 10 and 50 again, okay? Um, but it has to be a floating point number. So how would you go about doing that? Um, well, you have to think a little bit, okay? Um, let me declare a new variable here. I'm going to call this result, okay? Let's say that what I want to do here is create a random integer, uh, sorry, floating point number between 10 and 50. Okay, so that's what I want to do. So I already have my random number here. So whenever my code reaches this point, my random number is already here. So what can I do to manipulate this number and get a result that is between 10 and 50. Let's think about this problem for a second. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to do 10 plus number. Okay. So if I do 10 plus number, I will mandatorily get a number that's greater than 10, which meets at least one of my requirements here. Right. However, I have to make sure that this number is between 10 and 50. So I have to grab that random number, which is less than one and more than zero. Um, and it has to be 
I have to add 10 to it somehow and the result of that operation has to be less than 50, right? So essentially what that means is that I have to manipulate this, the value inside my number variable so that it ends up resulting in a number between 0 and 40. Okay, and how do I do that? Well, if it's 0, 0 times something will be zero. So it is safe to do multiplication in the lower bound. In the upper bound, let's say I get something very, very close to one, 0 0.9999999 times something. Um, it'll be very close to that something. And what should that something, something be? Think about it. It has to be 40, right? Because 10 plus 40 is 50. Okay, so I know that it has to be greater than 10, and that's why I'm adding 10. And I know that the addition between whatever I have here plus 10 has to be lower than 50. Okay, so if I'm getting a number that's less than 1 and more than 0, I can safely multiply that number times 40, and I am going to get a number that's lower than 40, right? And whatever number it is, if it's lower than 40 plus 10, it's going to be between 10 and 50, which fulfills all my requirements. So if I run this, oh, I still got the same number because I forgot to change this. I'm gonna change that and let's run again. Look at what I got. I got 28.7666, etc. Which, yeah. Uh, fills my requirements just great. If I run this again, 25. And doesn't matter how many times I run it, it'll always be between 10 and 50. Okay, this one's actually pretty close, 50, 45.3. So, great. So this is how you would go about solving this kind of problem. I hope this video makes sense. Um, and that's it. That's what I said. It was going to be quick, quick and painful. That's good. So I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.